Today, I've prepared for you a Ben Nine answer to a common type of IELTS Academic Writing Task 1 2 charts. You'll learn how this answer meets different requirements and what you should do to get a high score for your report. It's us here. <laughs> Let's get started. Here is our task. The bar chart below shows you a seafood imports between 2002 and 2022 and the forecast for 2032. The pie chart shows the geographical structure of these imports in 2022. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. And we have two charts a bar chart and a pie chart. The bar chart shows seafood inputs in three time periods in the past and a forecast. The pie chart shows what proportion of seafood comes from each country. Let's get straight to the model answer. Each report needs an introduction, one or two sentences where you tell the reader what information you've got. Here is mine. The graphs provide information on the volume of seafood inputs in the United States from 2002 to 2022, along with a prediction for 2032, and illustrate the distribution of seafood inputs among countries in 2022. In the introduction, quite often we simply paraphrase the task. In our case, we have two simple sentences. I've merged them into one longer sentence, which covers both charts. The paraphrasing is light. Instead of saying the bar chart shows or the pie chart shows, I used the graphs provide information on. Instead of US seafood inputs, I wrote the volume of seafood inputs in the United States. I repeated the words seafood imports because that's what this task is about. And I'm gonna use them many times throughout the answer. It's okay to repeat keywords. Instead of between 2002 and 2022 and the forecast for 2032, we have from, to, along with the prediction for. So that was the description of the first chart. Now the second. The task reads, the pie chart shows the geographical structure of these inputs in 2022. And I wrote, the graphs illustrate the distribution of seafood imports among countries. So the geographical structure is the distribution among countries. So in my introduction, I paraphrased the task sentences, but kept the meaning. And you can actually watch my in-depth lesson on how to write introductions from my paid course. This is a free preview and I'll link it in the video description. And now let's have a look at the overview. An overview is one or two sentences where you summarize what you've learned from the task. What's the big picture? Without going into detail, I think it's best to write your overview together with the introduction in a single paragraph. And it's common to start with the word overall to clearly indicate to the examiner that this is your overview. Next, let's look at the first chart. The US seafood import market grew substantially in the past two decades. On the chart, you can see that imports increased a lot between 2002 and 2022. As we are in 2023, we can say in the past two decades. I'm not giving numbers, just an overview of the trend. Next, I continue the same sentence with an overview of the pie chart, with the majority of the imports sourced from several countries. I'll name these countries in my body paragraphs. What I want to say here is that several countries import most or more than 50% of the seafood and the last bit. In the future, however, import levels are forecast to shrink. 
This is a reference to the forecast on the first chart. Again, I'll give the exact number in the body paragraph. Here I simply say that the inputs will go down, the trend will change. Instead of simply saying inputs, I used input levels to add variety to the vocabulary. Have a look at the overview as a whole. You see, I've summarized all the information on both charts. That's important. And if you're wondering why it says input levels are forecast and not are forecasted, both are possible because this verb can be used as regular or irregular to be forecast or to be forecasted. Let's move on to the body paragraphs. Most reports have two body paragraphs. Occasionally you may have three, but never one, because of how examiners assess if the structure is right and if you can logically organize information. To get band 7, your report must be logically organized, which means that you need to find a logical way to divide information between your body paragraphs. In this task, it's easy. I describe the first chart in the first body paragraph and the second in the second. And my first body paragraph is Between the years 2002 and 2022, seafood inputs in the United States tripled. I'm starting the body paragraph by making a big statement that describes the strong upward trend we have. Now I need some figures from the charts to support this description. From about $6 billion at the beginning of the period to over $20 billion in 2022. This is a gold standard of writing body paragraphs in your task one. You describe a trend and then you select the figures that support this description. This shows that you're summarizing the information instead of simply reporting details. Indeed, you'll be penalized for giving too many details or too many numbers. You must be strategic. Despite the past growth, uh, this phrase links my sentences and tells the examiner that something different is coming next. That's great for your cohesion. Despite the past growth, the graph forecasts a decline in seafood inputs by approximately $2 billion in 2032 compared to the 2022 levels. Let's move on to body paragraph 2 describing the pie chart. Regarding the geographical split of inputs in 2022, this phrase introduces what this paragraph is about and helps link paragraphs together which is a must for a band 7 score. China, Thailand and Canada were the dominant countries controlling two-thirds of the market. We have a lot of countries on the chart, but when it comes to inputs, the larger the country, the more important it is. So I'm talking more about the top three countries and I've calculated that their share of inputs is 67% or two thirds. Please note that in this fraction, we need the hyphen and the denominator, the second number is plural. Okay, we've described the key findings. Now we need to support this description with some figures from the chart. China had the largest share of seafood inputs to the United States, 28%, followed by Thailand, 23%, and Canada, 16%. When you want to name several countries and give a figure for each, the simplest and quickest way is to put those numbers in brackets next to each country. Now we have several smaller countries. What do we do with them? Well. There are only three left. How do we group them? In contrast, other countries such as Indonesia, Vietnam and Ecuador each contributed less than 10% of the seafood imports. In contrast is the linker which shows that these countries are different from the big importers we talked about before. Other countries such as Indonesia, Vietnam and Ecuador 
I use M dashes before and after the countries to separate them from the rest of the sentence. This is band 8 or 9 grammar, but if you can do it in your report, that's great. And in this sentence, I don't give numbers for each country. Rather, I say that they are small, less than 10%. That's enough. In your report, you should concentrate on describing trends and key features, not little details. But it may not be easy to pick them straight away. That's why in my courses, there are report plans for each type of task, helping you select the most important information by asking yourself certain questions. I'll link the IELTS Academic Pack in the description. It can help you prepare for your IELTS writing and speaking step by step in less time and hopefully achieve a higher score. And now our report is ready. As it's a task one report, you don't need a conclusion. We have three paragraphs and 180 words. If you'd like to download this motto answer in PDF format, it's linked in the description. The next step is to learn how to write each part of your report and how to answer different types of task one. You can watch my in-depth lesson on how to write an introduction in this video here. I'll teach you how to paraphrase and how to write an introduction for each type of task one. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!